joined by Tony Llorente, who's from Tuburus, one of the remote indigenous communities in the Bosawa Spire Square Reserve in Nicaragua. Tony studied for many years in Managua at the high school and the university level, since there were no options to study high school in his community at that time. His bachelor's degree is from the Universidad Americana, and it's in political science, diplomacy, and international relations. He's currently the communications and monitoring coordinator for an innovative technological project for education implemented by Change for Children Association, an Alberta-based organization. Tony is also a Mosquito youth passionate about advocating for education in his community. So the project that Tony is working on, Tile or Technology for Improved Learning and Education, is making educational resources available to teachers and students throughout the Bosawas region. They're providing mobile learning labs, which are basically sets of laptops to schools in seven communities in the Bosawas. These mobile learning labs allow students to learn the skills of using technology while also accessing resources and previously unavailable educational content, including materials in their mother tongue, Mesquito. So thank you for being here, Tony. And to start off, I know that you just came back from a tour checking in on the tile projects in each community. So how did it go? Hi, uh, thank you for the very warm introduction. And uh, I'm happy to be here with you today. So um, yeah, the project has been well described, and um, yeah, we were on a uh, we were on a tour to the communities, and we we're um, trying to check on what's going on, and to get updates from each of the community facilitators that we have uh, in the communities, and um, it went very well. You know, we were able to um, collect data, we were able to follow up with some activities, and. Uh, there's a lot of progress. There's a lot of uh, different things going on, and and all of them are, are are great. You know, teachers and students are um, already learning how to use a computer, how to navigate through the through Rachel. The Rachel is the server that we um, we have in each of the communities. The server is basically like a digital library that um, hosts all the modules, all the content, all the information. So. In general, the, the tour was very, uh, very great. You know, the community uh, teachers were trained on new pedagogical uh, topics and uh, also gender related topics. So it was a great trip. And um, I wouldn't doubt, I wouldn't hesitate to go on a, on a new one soon. That's great. And um, this project seems to be kind of in a newer stage. So have you been having some challenges in getting it started the last little while? Oh, sure. So um, in terms of how it's been used, um, uh, how the technology has been used in, uh, in the classrooms, it's been uh, uh, very uh, welcomed and um, teachers and, and students are all using the technology with excitement and everything. But when it comes to some technical um, difficulties, um, yes, we have um, we have to be regularly updating the, the Chromebooks. These are the laptops that are, you know, are working with, uh, uh, this is a Chrome OS uh, operating system. So it's a little bit difficult to be updating when the signal or the internet is not stable. So sometimes we have to uh, bring the computers from the communities out to Wooly and we have to be updating them and then, um, you know, take them back to each of the schools. So that's the only challenge that we have been facing at this time. And um, there's been a lot uh, different situations such as like the neighboring teachers having to travel from one, um, from the neighboring settlements, like I said previously, to the central community where the Rachel or where the solar or the digital uh, room or the digital classroom is uh, set up. But in that, specific case, um, Change for Children has been working on providing transportation and meal, so it's not a challenge anymore. That, that challenge was basically in phase one of this project. But in terms of the current challenges that we're facing, and I think that's going to be all, almost uh, a, a challenge that's going to be remain while we don't have a, a stable internet connection, is that, you know, the technical situation where we have to be repairing the Chromebooks, uh, we have to be restarting all of them. And, um, and the only way possible to do that is uh, when you bring them to Wewilly. 
For sure. Yeah. No, that's very to be expected. And that's that's interesting. So you mentioned uh, internet access, and I see that Change for Children is rely or is um, providing solar power to some schools. Is that is that helping the logistics of providing internet and electricity in this project? Definitely. Well, in terms of, of the project and um, and how it's been it's been set up, um, Osawas is one of the regions. Like you said previously, this is one of the most remote regions in Central America, I would say, because um, in here the communities are, or most of them are indigenous communities, Mayangas and Mosquitoes. Uh, in this specific case, we uh, are working directly with my own people, we, uh, we are Mosquito people. And in, in that case, we don't have access to electricity, we don't have access to um, uh, internet, to Wi Fi. The, the only access to uh, to internet available is through cell tower, which was also um, installed or set up like just five years ago. So, but still it's not a reliable internet connection. So in that case, um, Change for Children worked on um, installing solar, uh, solar power in each of the schools with, uh, with a very um, reliable system. And now it's been able to provide electricity to the equipment, to the devices. Without that, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be possible, you know, to be using the technology, to be using uh, these devices in the schools. So Change for Children has been working directly in how to um, bring the renewable or clean energy in the communities through the installation of solar power. So each of the solar, each of the schools, like I said, uh, has a solar power system. Without it, we, we wouldn't be working directly with the teachers because there's no electricity in the community. So it's been a challenge that Change for Children has to be uh, had to uh, overcome with uh, with their years of experience in the territory as well mm -hmm. and years of study as well. So yeah, it's um, it's been a little bit hard. And and specifically, this project is very um, this is very innovative and because this is like the result of uh, the years of work of Change for Children that has been uh, a lot of investment of Change for Children in the territory, in the region. And now this is like highlighting all of those work that Change for Children has been doing for years. So the community, the teachers, the students alike are so excited about being part of a very um, transforming project that involves, you know, and definitely the, um, building of teachers' capacity and students accessing a lot of different information that they didn't have before. And so that, that describes the project as a very innovative one. And in a practical way, that is how it works. You know? For sure. And that's, that kind of leads me to my next question. So for you being from the Bosawas and having your experience in development work, why is this project so important so relevant in your own mind? Sure, definitely. So <laughs> this is so relevant because like you uh, mentioned previously, you mentioned in uh, when you were talking about my bio and um, we didn't have any of um, access to education. Uh, we would mention about secondary education. We didn't, we didn't have any of that in the region. So that's one of the reasons that I had to leave uh, um, also ask my communities behind and you know it was a challenge because that's something that not everyone is able to do and I'm very thankful with Change for Children that I was able to be uh, part of a scholarship and help me to finish my university uh, education but that happens that doesn't happen in, in every uh, every of the scenarios so we didn't have anybody else uh, getting a, a, a diploma or a degree or anything like that. And now it is possible because Change for Children has been building also schools in, in each of the schools that we are now working with the technology and they, uh, the, 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 the boys and girls, boys and girls can now finish their uh, high school level education. So that's a very transforming in itself. But when it comes to technology, even the teachers or the students, um, they don't, they didn't know anything about technology. They, they couldn't even turn on or off a computer. And now they are able to do even more than that. They can even navigate, use a lot of different information tools, like you know, statistics um, tools like Excel or Word. So it's, it's something that uh, as a teachers, 
mentioned themselves, it's it's a dream uh, come true, and it's for some it's a dream that was not even dreamed before, because uh, <laughs> this is something very new, and that's that's how innovative this is for the teachers, and it's very relevant, and um, definitely this is going to be a huge um, a huge uh, I would say a huge leap in education. And it's going to transform a lot of lives, mostly because we're working now with, with girls. Um, we're working uh, towards, you know, accomplishing or achieving girls' rights to education. So I think all of this is possible through technology only. And we have um, different components on our project, which is um, indigenous rights, you know, girls' rights to education, which is gender equality, and also um, teachers' capacity building. Uh, most of the teachers are... Uh, lay teachers, they don't have any um, any degree or any diploma or anything that tells that they are teachers. You know, they are just there because they finish secondary education. Some of them haven't even finished that level of education. So um, that really makes it so important this project. So uh, this is just you know a, a great innovation, a great achievement in education. I think that it makes it so unique even in in all Nicaragua this kind of a project hasn't been implemented so much so I'm very happy you know for my people now uh, leaders like community leaders or um, our, our elders can tell their stories and can tell tell us more about how our histories our customs or traditions and now they can be recorded into the Rachel and, and teachers and students alike, they can now access to those materials. And I think that's one of the ways uh, we are, mm, I would say, reivindicating the rights of indigenous people as well. So I can go on and saying how innovative this is, but those are some of the examples that makes it so relevant. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I um, Yeah, it makes me wonder, so what kind of educational resources are being offered in the content library and then maybe you could speak a bit to the language part of it to the how I think it's described yeah. as linguistically appropriate as well as culturally appropriate. Exactly, exactly. Perfect. So um, the Rachels are, are coming from Guatemala and um, and they have uh, um, they have a preloaded content like uh, by default, but when it comes to um, the resources that we have been uploading, those are um, textbooks that we have gotten from Minet or from CR, from Huracan, and um, we have also uploaded materials that have been uh, locally produced, like the ones I mentioned of teachers and leaders talking about the, the, the communities, the stories, and everything, the beliefs. So. The, the, the students didn't know anything about their culture. It's, uh, it's sad to say, but that was the case, you know, because um, there was no way to get to that information. And in the region, we, um, there's a lot, there was a scarcity of materials, basically when it's, it's related to mosquito materials. And even though the Ministry of Education in Nicaragua has some materials, um, they have not, uh, being made available to the to the communities, so nobody could re even read a book in Mosquito, or nobody could even uh, access those materials. And now it's possible because all of them have been uploaded onto the Rachel. And not only that, but new materials have been produced locally. So that really uh, makes it so important, you know, the, the project because. Uh, now teachers are beginning to teach in their own tongue, something that was not ever seen before. And, you know, it's um, very innovative in a way that teachers didn't even know how to, um, how to name the, the days of the week or, or, the, or the numbers. But now they can read and they can learn more about their own tongues, something that was not seen before. So I think that's, when it comes to culturally uh, appropriate materials, because now they can even use the materials to teach. And that way, uh, mostly uh, children, you know, from uh, the first ages, now, now they can access those materials, learn in their own tongue, and 
that is something that makes it very important because they can now be educated um, and get access to more information faster. So I think that's how it works when it comes to culturally and linguistically adapted materials. That's really interesting. And I also see, so it seems like you're, you're working with youth leaders as well. Tech savvy youth leaders in classrooms will act as the local tech facilitators. So is there a reason that you've chosen this system and do you find it might help the technology get adopted in the classroom faster? Um, yes, we are working with uh, the community facilitators. These community facilitators, um, some of them have been, um, they were part of a, a Change for Children scholarship program. And well, they have been prepared in, uh, in a specific area of um, education. Like they, they, some of them are even like pedagogical. Um, they have, they hold a, pedagogical degree or something related to education, or some of them have studied different fields of, uh, of education. But, but when it comes to technology, since they have been educated outside of the communities, they can, um, they they can handle uh, a computer, they can teach using a computer, and they are aware of how to um, use the technology. So, and, and, and they were also prepared, uh, they were also trained uh, by the project on how to use those materials, those equipment. So when it comes to um, their, you know, their capacity, uh, I think that a lot of a lot of um, all of this uh, success depends on their skill to uh, speak mosquito. All of these are local from the communities they are working with, and um, that helps that teachers and students can adapt to the technology faster. So. I think that this youth are an example, and this is inspiring more more students as well to to educate themselves. You know, and I think that it's a very important way to uh, demonstrate that you know indigenous leaders, boys and girls, can be educated. Definitely, and you. So you mentioned this a little bit earlier. The Ministry of Education of Nicaragua. So I'm wondering. It seems like there's kind of a a lack of materials being sent to the Basawas region, educational materials. But do you find, so we've kind of talked in our class about the idea of governments investing in digital innovation. Do you feel like the government has been supportive or responsive to the projects of Change for Children or educational projects or digital innovation projects? Or could there be more support? Mm, well, at this time, uh, I could say that uh, we have been um, coordinating with um, MINET, we call it MINET, that's the Ministry of Education. Uh, we've been coordinating uh, every activity with them, and I think that they have been part of the process all the way along. And they have been very supportive of this project uh, since the very beginning. And uh, we have uh, members of MINET in all of our visits, in all of our tours. And they're also uh, working directly on, uh, on what else is needed, you know, because some of the new subjects, some of the new materials that are not available in the territory is provided by, by Minet once we ask them. And they, they've been all, all part of the process. So I think that in that specific um, relationship that we have been uh, having with Minet, it's been okay, right? That's great. Yeah, great to hear. And then on the other side of it, um, not just with government supporting innovation, but what would you say roles of organizations? So just like Change for Children, uh, what's the role of organizations in investing in technology and innovation in international development work? Absolutely top notch, you know, <laughs> because listen, Al, <laughs> we didn't have, um, even though Minet is part of the process, Minet itself, didn't have the capacity, I would say, or uh, didn't have the initiative to um, bring about this change that we're seeing with Change for Children. They didn't invest in a project like this. Well, it has to do with many, many reasons, definitely, I, I understand, because maybe more regions in Nicaragua have been uh, prior prioritized first, and maybe Bosawas is in the in the last list and, and whatever. But I think that 
what really makes it possible for indigenous peoples is the great investment of organizations like Change for Children. If Change for Children or any type of other organizations, any SMOs, wouldn't be doing this kind of things, this wouldn't be possible. We would be here for years. And even Minette people have been saying that, you know, on our side, we wouldn't be able to uh, be working with Bosawas until like the next 10 years. So if you if you think about it, it's like a long way ahead and, and you're gonna be without this innovation that Change for Children is providing. So Change for Children really like, like uh, NGOs like supporting from the outside, is playing the, the the top role in this, and without the support, we wouldn't be talking about this. We wouldn't have this in the communities. So I think that we, the only thing we could say is we're we're so thankful with all this support, with all this help, and there's nothing possible without the support. Of course, there's coordination with Minet with the national government, but without the real the real spirit, the the, the, the the love or the support coming from the outside organizations, we wouldn't be having all this uh, being implemented in the community. So we're very thankful with that. And I think that uh, more, um, more changes, like you know, rights acknowledged and, and also education being restored and uh, mother tongue being restored in, in the indigenous communities specifically is possible only through the support of organizations like the change for children you know mm -hmm. definitely so a future of more investment from organizations so my last question we're kind of out of time but just um in your in your opinion what do you see from your experience in development what do you see the future of combining technology and innovation and international development work what do you hope to see in the future well, well, from my, from my personal opinion, I think that technology is a very useful tool, but it's, it has to be powered with ideas as well. You know, technology, when used strategically, it can really impact uh, lives in different communities and different parts of the world. And I think that technology is going to be able to transform the ways um, uh, people live, the ways people are uh, are transforming their culture as well. And um, I think that it's also okay for everyone to get access to information. And I think that the only way possible for that is um, through using technology, you know? But like I said, it has to be used strategically, you know, for, for a specific uh, purpose and like for education, you know? And um, if, we, if we didn't have technology, we would be educating the teachers and students the way we're doing now. So in the future, I believe that technology is going to be very uh, helpful in uh, continue preparing the teachers uh, for say, and that way more generations to come, they can be prepared um, in education, but as well, they can get access to information like I was uh, mentioning earlier, they can now know uh, more about their culture uh, through digitally stored materials that were uh, compiled from the communities. And I think that that's some of the things that are motivating uh, people to continue learning, to continue preserving their culture, uh, to continue to feel proud about who they are, uh, about their identity. And, and technology is the future for every good thing that we want to uh, want to have, you know? And technology, of course, you know, used in other parts of the world, um, it can save lives when it comes to health, when it comes to um, communication, it can really transform the ways, the way family communicate and everything. And I think that technology is, has to be used strategically. That's, that's the way it has to be used. For, for now, you know, like I was saying, uh, girls' rights are now recognized, are acknowledged, and they can be uh, prepared in their own rights. You know, they are empowered in their rights. And that's only possible through technology. And they can um, also get educated. And in general, you know, to uh, to summarize, I think that technology is going to be transforming. It's going to continue to transform um, this world, and we are happy about it. We are welcoming technology, and we're working hard to um, transform lives using technology. I like that. Yeah. So technology, not just for the sake of technology, but with 
strategy and, and good development practices. Okay, well, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Do you have any last comments or, or things you'd like to say? Well, um, I was, uh, I just wanted to thank you for, for this opportunity to talk about what we're doing in the Bosolas region. And um, like I said, you know, I'm very excited myself about what's happening in my communities. So just wanted to say that and thank you so much. Thank you to you for your time and for your interview. And um, looking forward to talk to you more about this and about the future opportunities that we could have. Yeah, no, thank you so much for your time. This has been really, really inter interesting and, and insightful. And I really, I'm going to keep my eye on this project. I hope it goes really well and it continues to get funded. Thank for you. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Very thankful about it.